here at the kind of center there, you would have ran into Jerome Nadal, who would have been Ignatius' secretary at the time. They would have worked very much in concert with each other, bringing in, of course, the contents of the Society of Jesus from around the world, coming over there to send them as many letters across the world uh, for reading. So you do not go into Ignatius, but let's say you're Nadal's lawyer. Oh, so you're very much a gatekeeper. At the evening, however, this room became a very, very different place of operations. Nadal says, what do you do? And the guy on the table looks right away. Bring me to the reception. Absolutely. This is a very important dining room because Ignatius would have cardinals, bishops, um, princes and princesses, dukes and other upper echelon people of the city come in for dinner working with them, getting them to help fund apostolates, other works in the city, getting them to network with them, what we would call today as networking. Right, right. Uh, but also they'd be very interested to hear about the Jesuits who were working on the missions across the world. And so Ignatius would have those letters ready to read to them about those stories. Above it is uh, a wonderful icon called Our Lady of the Desk. Uh, if you want to think about it, it's, uh, it comes around the 1400s. Um, this is a copy of the icon that he would have seen every day while he was writing. The actual icon today uh, is at uh, our community in Genoa. Uh, the church there, the Jesuit community attached to the church, they proudly hang their, mm. their original of this icon in their, in their community chapel. Generous enough to give you a little bit of They were very <laughs> generous. Very generous. Um, this chair is, is not Ignatius's chair, but it belonged to um, the Superior General uh, Francis Borgia. Okay. And so that was the chair he wore and sat at. Wow. Where Ignatius was drowned in that. It could have been something so many more. Well, we know. Mm-hmm. Behind us, and one of the one of the favorite pieces is a copy of the death mask of Ignatius. This is a bronze. Uh, immediately after Ignatius died, they did a, a copy of his head in clay, and that terracotta head is being kept in the archives near the Curia. Uh, we have a copy here. This is his height, so this was his actual height at the time um, wow. that he was living, so people usually come here and take a nice photo, usually commenting on his lack of stature. Yes. So we're a different era, different time. Right, mm-hmm. right, right. That's a wonderful mask because you can get really very close to see the kind of the detail, some of the wrinkles around the eyes, some of the, the remains of, of, his, of his mustache, etc. Um, but that very characteristic face, uh, which is seen and replicated in art, in statues, and paintings around the world mm-hmm. um, as Ignatius. Wow. Over here, we have a very interesting letter uh, written in the hand of Ignatius. Uh, with his original stamp here. Uh, this letter is actually asking permission with one of the local families next door, <coughs> nearby, one of the local houses nearby. They were always working with each other, is a very nice way of saying it, with the neighborhood uh, to be able to work together. Ignatius was always wanting to build the JC church next door, uh, but he was never able to because he couldn't either have the money or two, he couldn't get the neighbors to agree. Um, but this particular letter is a comment or commentary asking for permission regarding some windows that are nearby. Oh, I see. Um, but you do have the original signature that is Ignatius' signature uh, there. And that stamp would be the That was original? his, that is his stamp that he used. Oh, okay. And then it's stamped there. Italians love stamps. Yes. Everything gets stamped. <laughs> my, my receipt at the post office gets a stamp. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful IHS at the yes. top. Yeah. He was a prolific mm. writer. Yeah. And to know that this was all being done in penmanship and. Oh, absolutely. And, and really, he works in such concert with Nadal. Uh, here we have a copy of the exercises. Here we don't have, we don't have 
um, this is a print copy. This is the handwritten copy. If we see here, we have is the handwritten version from the doll, so he's written. But if you can tell, and it's hard to see from this from this Xerox, we have the margin notes yes. of Ignatius. So they're they're making adjustments. Whoa. I'm sorry. This is the Constitution, Constitution. not not the exercise of the Constitutions. Uh, so we can see in a doll's handwriting and Ignatius's yes. handwriting side by side. So he would have proofread the. Uh, well, Nadal would have, uh, have transcribed that for Ignatius. Mm -hmm. And so then they would have talked about it talked again. About it, then yeah. once it was written out, then he would end up uh, adding more corrections. Right, absolutely. Because movements. the constitutions were very much a working document at the time. Right. Um, and really was work of many people. We, we give credit, full credit to Ignatius, but there were a lot of minds going on in the writing of the constitutions, right. uh, which makes it very interesting, I, I think. Yes. Um, which is interesting, here we have a print version of the Constitutions. Ignatius heard of this very interesting inven invention called the printing press, and says we gotta get ourselves one of those. And so he brings the second printing press to the city of Rome. Always ahead with the technology, always going to be on top of the technology. Technology always toward mission. Exactly. So that would justify us having all our computers and- uh, If that's what it takes, sure. Absolutely. <laughs> 